The Zanzibar archipelago lies in the Indian Ocean off the East African coast. Zanzibar is a semi-autonomous region of Tanzania, and though once a major spice exporter, today, however, tourism is the largest industry. But the idyllic settings of this tropical paradise mask a reality of poverty and drug abuse, and where women are fighting to get their voices heard in society. But sports, and in particular football, is being used as a tool not only to help wean addicts off drugs, but also to help the progress of women. Zanzibar is predominantly a Muslim society, and the role of women adheres to strict Islamic customs. However, the beautiful game is allowing women to pursue ambitions hitherto frowned upon. It's no surprise football is being used as a tool for social development. Football reigns supreme in Africa, and Zanzibar is no exception. It's mainly men who watch the matches at the Mao Zedong Stadium in Zanzibar City, but the sport is becoming increasingly popular amongst women. One woman in particular has been instrumental in that change. Nasra J. Mohammed has been fighting for a woman's right to play football since the 80s, and her success has helped advance the case for more autonomy for women in general. There is no women's league in Zanzibar, but they've been playing football here since 1988, when Nasra set up Women Fighters, a team she coaches to this day. The inspiration came after Tiresu FC from Sweden had toured Africa to promote women's football. Ever since, more and more women have started to play, like team captain Katma Mwalim. We used to play against men, but they would try to kick us and tackle us with great force. But we never gave up. We stood our ground because we are women who fight back. Since 2004, two more teams have formed in Zanzibar, Women Solidarity and Bungi Sisters. The latter is based in a rural area, which is an indication that society is coming to terms with women's participation in sport. There are still people who think it's wrong for us to play football because, according to Muslim tradition, dressing for and playing football is like us performing naked. But I don't think women playing football goes against any religious faith. It actually helps us feel really happy and it makes us feel physically fit. We use football to help us achieve what we are fighting for. Football can be used to help cure a variety of ills. And it's helping us. Like, it's assisting with the rehabilitation of drug addicts from Sober House. Drug addiction in Zanzibar is reaching epidemic proportions. In the mid-80s, the then socialist Zanzibar government opened its doors to tourism and trade. However, the islands quickly became a key transit point for shipments of heroin from Afghanistan on their way to the west. As a result, drug addiction became embedded in Zanzibar society like never before. These men are all former drug addicts staying at Sober House, where football forms part of their rehabilitation program. Okay, Babu Ali. One of the founders, Suleiman M. Mauli, is a former addict himself. What we want to do is help these men get over their drug addiction. Before we began this project, there was no such program here in Zanzibar. There's absolutely nothing here. So it's our hope to get a place which we could use as a safe house, so we could help a lot of people cope with their recovery. Not only to help the addicts, but also to assist their families and friends. To recover, the addicts stay in the house for three months. Football helps them to become physically stronger and healthier, and also to bond with other members of the group. Football makes us feel part of a unit. We feel we are part of a team. The biggest threat is to be on your own. When you are alone, the chances of you going back to drugs are greater. Also, here we're able to develop new relations because we have to distance ourselves from the bad friendships we had before. 
It's vitally important to separate yourself from the people involved in drugs. The peer-to-peer -peer program is mainly self-funded, but it's also supported by a US-based drug recovery project from Detroit and is backed by the Zanzibar government. There are daily therapy sessions for addicts and their friends and family. However, the lack of funds is an everyday challenge for all. A hit of heroin costs about a dollar. To stay at the house costs two dollars a night. The group also struggle with food shortages and other rising overheads. On top of that, they also have to find acceptance in their local community. There is a lot of stigma attached when you're a drug addict. And the program helps us change people's perceptions. People can see how hard a struggle it is to stop taking drugs. In addition to that, football gives us a chance to carry our message out to other users who come to watch us play matches. The football team appeals to them, but more importantly for us, it's like having an audience for our anti-drugs work. Currently, the Sober House team play regular fixtures against street teams, but plans are underway to raise the standard of the opposition. It has been suggested that the group may register a team to play in the second division of the National League, which would attract more players and supporters alike. Thanks to the universal appeal of football, both the Sober House group and the women's fighters football teams are able to get their messages across to a larger audience in the hope that their respective aims of the rehabilitation of drug abusers and women's advancement can be achieved.